Hey, God bless you, Brother Ron here with the Sister Sheree uh, and the other brethren here uh, just for a, a mighty gospel invasion here at the U.S. Open Surf Competition in Huntington Beach. What we're doing here today uh, is a manifold work where we're going to work the pier, work parts of the intersections, and uh, so we call it beach plow. If you've never done one of these, where we plow the shoreline, as you may see in the video here, is uh, we cover all from the pier, both sides, and wrap them around, and, and just let the word run swiftly, the word come out, and uh, people are receiving literature, they're stunned. The kingdom of God's coming upon them, uh, and there's just hearts that are, that God's opening, there's uh, just a, a manifold work of grace happening, uh, as people aren't expecting that, and uh, the Spirit of God is moving, so we're thankful for the opportunity. But we're going to see in these videos as well, um, God has provided Sister Serene and others, here, we haven't gotten that footage from the, from the brethren in L.A., uh, the gospel team here. Uh, we've got a lot of Seattle, a lot of work in Vegas, but uh, you'll see more videos from the L.A. team coming in. So you can get in contact with them if you live in the area to get out and learn biblical evangelism, learn how to invade events and, and do this. And so we want to help you equip, uh, equip the saints for the work of ministry. That's the intent of these. Uh, and so we hope that we were edified and, and, and keep this work in prayer. This is only, only God can open doors like this. I mean, we've been miraculous by the grace of God, able to, to, to walk this beach here of that fight sound and get out. Really, it can be very hindering at times. So, yeah, praise God. condition. We don't revere the Lord. We don't fear God because we love sin. Why do you do that? We love evil rather than good, lying rather than speaking righteousness. As you come out here and enjoy God's peace and God's creation, thank God and give Him praise. The new heart is such a nice heart by His grace. Are you paid by George Soros? See, God commands you to repent and believe in the gospel. Very simple message today. They do this to make Christians look bad. They're paid by George Soros. Towards God. You don't even believe in God. You don't believe in God. Jesus Christ. They do this, this is the gospel of the kingdom of God. Out. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world. God is great! God loves you! They don't know! Then he will come. See, God is love and God moved in love to he save. He doesn't know! God moved in love to He's save by demonstrating an unconditional love in the person of Jesus Christ to save wicked sinners that he had no obligation to save. God is not obligated to save anyone but of his own will. He brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. If anyone is in Christ, a new creature, become a new man, a new woman internally because we have degenerate hearts, idolatrous hearts, hearts full of lust, poison with bitterness. He says that man is abominable and filthy. He drinks iniquity like water. Freely we receive, freely we give, because that's who we were out of Christ. And we're out here today to proclaim the glory of God today in His namesake. Point, not so you make that's a good point you brought up there. We do, if we do, then we we're really filthy. But it's our hearts that are filthy, and so we try to clean up nice on the outside, but the inside is full of rottenness and dead men's bones. If it hasn't been cleaned by the blood of Jesus, that's why you need Jesus. Because you can clean up real nice, but God sees what's inside. And imagine you never had a bath all your life, how bad your body odor would be, how bad the stench of that, how foul that would be if you could think it's crude, but it's reality. Our, our body, if we never had a bath in our life for 20, 30 years, that'd be horrifying. Now think about how that sin's been accruing since you were born. All the lies, the lust, the greed, the pride, the blasphemies, the drunkenness, the sexual morality, it's all on your account, in your soul, and God has looked upon all of that, recorded all of that, and that's what's going to be burned away in the lake of fire for those who do not repent and bow to His Son. So your only hope is Jesus Christ. Let's first clean up the inside, the outside will take care of itself, right? Are you more concerned about your outward appearance, your suntan, or... Because you're not going to think about it. You're more concerned about your outward appearance than the inward condition of your soul. we got a sewer of a soul apart from Jesus Christ. We need to talk to you about it. You need to know about it because you're in great danger today. If you die today in this body, apart from the Lord Jesus Christ, there'll be nothing but the ruthless judgment of God upon you. Folks, you need to be saved from the power of sin, from the love of your sin. And the great news of this gospel is that Jesus Christ is the bread of life. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. You receive him today. 
Not a message of condemnation. You're already condemned if you have not believed. In the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. That the light has come into the world. And men love it. Let him read it. You take it. Yeah, if you don't want it, it's you. You take it. If your girlfriend doesn't want to go to heaven, if your boyfriend, if your family, you, you, you go to heaven without it. If you come to Jesus without them, they're not going to be here to preach your cause when you die. You're not going to have anyone plead your case when you stand before God. All your loved ones are going to be there and see the secrets of your heart exposed. They're going to see how wicked you really were if you die in your sin. It's really true. I mean, can you imagine if somebody could play this, the, the, all the thoughts of your, it's your thoughts alone that you've ever had since you were a child? in front of this beach right now, you'd run out of here. You'd put your face on the big screen, put you up there, and say, here's Jamie, here's her, here's her lust, and all the things she thought about one after another. There'll be millions upon millions of wicked sins on that. That's what's going to happen on the X-ray return. When God shows the secrets of the heart of the ungodly at the great white throne of judgment. You don't want to miss God in that condition, folks. A lot of people are going to be there. We've got to come to Christ. You better turn and live. Don't harden your hearts. There's hope for you in Christ alone. Don't reject Christ and keep living the way you're living. You'll pay the consequences. It's going to be eternal destruction. I know it's going to be real loud for those who've done their sins in unquenchable fire. There's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Bible says, so will it be at the end of the age when the angels come forth and separate the wicked from among the just. They'll be cast into the furnace of fire. They'll be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And the eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. And there is no creature hidden from his sight. All things are naked and open to the eyes of him. We only must give an account. So you're going to give an account to him who's ready to judge the living and the dead. Your life is a vapor. It appears for a little time. And then it vanishes away. Are you right with God today? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ today? If you die today. Are you ready to meet your God? Are you ready to spend eternity with God? Or would you be in hell? Ask, examine yourself. Ask yourself. If you died right now, where would you go? You live your life in anarchy against God. You live your life for yourself. God's been merciful and gracious to you beyond measure. You've forsaken Him and He still pours out grace. The longer you go in this condition, the worse off you're going to be, the greater your damnation will be. And the more you hear, the more truth you hear and the more truth you reject in this life, the greater accountability you're going to have before the judgment seat of Christ. You must be born again. Your sins get removed the moment you believe on Him. He's your you seek Him and live. Look unto Christ to be saved today. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. See, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except for me. There is one God and there's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. And the Lord Jesus is the only way to God to bring you out of darkness into his life. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. It would be better that you never existed if you lived your whole life without Jesus and died in your sin. There would be nothing but the ruthless judgment of God for you. It's very serious. You see, how, you see how nice it is out here today? What a beautiful day, guys. Your eyes will be holding that beautiful that water out there sitting on the sand. You're feeling all that good. And most of you aren't believers. Most of you right now are saved. Let's be honest. You don't know the Lord. And this is God's compassion, His beloved, His common grace, His benevolence, is pouring out great grace and love upon you, lavishing you with His goodness today. That should bring you to repent and place of what God, who are you, Lord? You are so good, God. I need to, I, I, I'm a wicked wretch. I'm a filthy sinner. I need to be saved. And then you look upon the cross where God sent His only Son to suffer and die to make the atonement for wicked people like you and me that would run to hell if He doesn't save you. And Jesus still came and finished the work the Father had Him to do. And He paid the sins for the sins of His people in full. And you must come and receive Him. It's an internal work God wrought in your heart. So when you're broken and contrite, you're sorry to God for this life that you live of rebellion and rejection of Him. And so, if you haven't done that, do that now, because when you're in hell, if you end up in hell, and then you'll be cast in the lake of fire as a second death, you're going to remember this. That on your beach today, the last thing maybe you'll be thinking about today is this. And this is going to be in your conscience while you're burning in everlasting conscience from the flames of hell. I'm not saying this to be mean to you. It's going to happen. It's going to happen like you've never dreamed. Like you can't comprehend. A little while right here. It's, ter I, 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 it's terrifying. You're going to stand before a holy God. And there's going to be no one to preach your case. 
Think about that right now. Are you prepared to stand before the judge and see the Christ? And your nation's going to burn. The day is coming and burning like an oven when all the proud, yes, all who do wicked, if we still, I don't know when or how, but God's going to bring great judgment upon your country. First quarter, an abominable idolatry. Your only hope is returning to Jesus Christ with all your hearts again. Folks, the day of the Lord comes, cruel with both wrath and fierce anger. But may the land desolate you will destroy. Are you guys with the church? If you're in any type of religion like Roman Catholicism or any religious cult, those are loathsome in the eyes of God. There's nothing you can do religiously that will make you right with God. Jesus already did it all. You must receive it. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Folks. Do not harden your hearts. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Flee from the wrath of God. The wrath of God is coming upon the disobedient. And the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Who suppress the truth. Yes. Our righteousness. Who may be known of God. It manifests in it for God has shown it to them. Since the creation of the world is invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Due to the eternal power in God is that they were without excuse because although they knew God, they did not glorify Him as God. But they became futile in their thoughts, their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. They changed the glory of the incorruptible God and made Him into an image like corruptible man, the birds, the corpses, the animals, and creeping things. They exchanged the truth of God for lie. He says, repent therefore and be baptized for the remission of sin. He says, he that believes in is immersed and baptized will be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Folks, you get, you get born again here, but people keep baptizing now. The baptism of the tree is to wash away your sins. It's internal. If you're born again, and God has delivered you from the power of Satan and sin, he lives inside of you, you go get immersed in the water, you publicly profess your faith. You publicly profess your faith in front of men that you are a follower of Christ who identify with his death, his burial, and his resurrection from the dead. By Jesus of baptism. Have you been baptized? You're a professing believer? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved. As the Ethiopian eunuch said, where, where's some water over here? What hinders me from being baptized? And Peter Philip said, but if you believe in all, with all your heart, you may. And that means you get a new heart, you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is your King, He's your Lord, He's your God, He rules the universe. And you want Him to rule you with all your heart, although He rules you now in spite of you. Although He is your Lord now in spite of you. When you receive Him as your personal Lord and Savior, the difference is you are willing to obey Him at all costs and forsake all you have to follow Him. The power of God. If that miracle has not happened to you today, or in your life, you're on the way to hell. The enemy of God, time is running out. Folks, the days are numbered. The day of the Lord comes cruel with both wrath and fierce anger. It will come as a thief of the night. He says, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. As in the days before the flood, they were eating and they were drinking. They were marrying and giving a marriage until the day that Noah entered into the earth. Really? And they did not know until the flood came and took them all away. So it's going to be at the coming of the Son of Man. It doesn't seem like reality that there will be a coming judgment, a day of recompense upon the ungodly. But God is not a man that he should lie, or a son of man that he should repent. There is a day that God will require your soul personally and bring all the nations into judgment. And it bring all the, he brings all the counsels of the nations to nothing and the plans of the people to none effect. And we're all going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And you're going to give an account to the one who sits on the throne, the Lord God Almighty. And you'll be naked before that throne internally with everything you've ever said, thought, or done exposed. You die out of Christ and in your sins. The hope today is your sins get covered. Your sins get removed. And God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past by the fathers through the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he's appointed heir of all things, and whom also he made the world 
who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins sat down at the right hand of God. He's coming again to tread the fierceness of the wine press of the wrath of Almighty God. He's coming again to destroy the nations. He said, I will bring the nations into the valley of Jehoshaphat, enter into judgment with them there. My determination is upon them my indignation. Folks, he will execute vengeance in anger and fury upon the heathen, such as they have not heard. Flee from the wrath to come. Your sins have damned your soul. Your sins have brought you into damnation under the wrath of God. And the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified to bear that wrath for all those who believe upon him. You must come to him. No one else, nothing else can save you. Your works are dead. Your lives are worthless and useless and futile. They're a vapor. There's nothing good in you at all. You are destitute and lost and bankrupt. But Christ died for a wretch like you. And when you have him, all the wealth, all the riches in the kingdom of God are yours. You get him now and forever. What? To be a partaker of the divine nature, having escaped the corruptions in the world through us. Let me ask you, are you bothering God? If you think you're bothering God with your life, do you think that we can come on God's planet and live our lives that we want? you think that bothers God? No, I think you're bothering people. Well, maybe that's true. <laughs> I'm not, not going to argue with you. But what do you think about it? That might be true. Yeah. Might be bothering a lot of people, but here's the thing. But you have a megaphone. It's not necessary. Just take your well, megaphone let me ask you this. And, and talk to people in person. When you think about this. There you go. When you think about this right now. Okay. Okay. See, now you're not bothering anybody. Well, regardless, no. do, you think, do you think if somebody can live, do you think it bothers God at all if we can come here and do whatever we want, uh, forget about Him, the one who gives you everything that, that bothers God? No, obviously it doesn't. Why would that bother God? No. Well, why wouldn't it bother him? Why wouldn't it? He's your God. He, yeah, he, it wouldn't bother He made you. Right. It should bother him. That's all. You're happy. Yes, but I don't think yelling in the microphone is really necessarily making people you, happy. Do you think if you're happy, you think you're, that you're being happy you, you can in believe, this life, you can, and then you die, and then you die, and then you die, and hold your own beliefs, but then don't, don't come to the beach and spread your beliefs. Like, no one wants to listen to you. You can't hold what, what you believe you in. you got to believe the God of the Bible. Everyone, right. everyone has different beliefs. I know that, but yeah. Not all is true. It's annoying just holding Not all is true, right? Jesus said, I have the truth. They can believe whatever they want. He's the truth, right? So they have a different Jesus. How do you know he's the truth? Because he's God. He loves him. Save I know it. By the grace, he, he lives in you. He, he saves you from what you were, and think, he brings you into. I don't he, think you ever. No, did he, he did. did he tell Believe you? Did he tell you to go run? Uh, I know what he's done in me, and what he's done to me. Yeah. Uh, because I was living like hell. Right. I would never came to God. Right. And he, he radically saved me internally. And I broke my heart for the way I was living to him. And after that, I would never. I would, I would, who would ever do this? Maybe you saved either, yourself. Either you're insane, or this is really a work of God. Otherwise, right. it's not possible. Yeah. It's shocking. Your body and death apart from the righteousness. Think about that. You're saying, you don't want to meet God as your judge. You don't want to meet God as your judge. You don't want to meet God as your savior, the merciful God that he is now. For the day of judgment is ruthless. There's no mercy. How do you know that exists? Uh, because he dwells inside of you by his spirit. If anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. I'm not trying to have a heated argument, but like... There's no argument. I mean, here, here we are. If there's no evidence... Only God saves sinners. His result, the life of Christ, yeah, but, like, manifesting his glory on this little playground here. A bunch of people that are lost, destitute. Lost? I'm not lost at all. Hey, here. Yeah, yeah, he is. Hey, here. He's lost for his... But if Jesus, Jesus came to seek and to say that was lost, human nature is evil. Human nature is evil? CCTV. Human nature is evil. Because I believe in creation. Oh, God, no, please. I don't believe in creation, I mean. <laughs> well, you do, because you were created by God. You got different fingerprints, different DNA. You got every, everything about you is different than every other human being has ever lived. God made you in his image, but you're fallen. You seem to be recreated by God eternally to be in the image of God. That's why you need Jesus. And Jesus comes into his people, dwells in them by his spirit, makes them alive. And then we repent believe so we can serve the living truth. You know you need to be saved. You don't want to die. You don't like getting hurt. No, you don't feel good to get hurt. Right? Yeah. We don't like any pain. Right? So, but I'm at fault for that. I, I don't believe in predestination. I believe that this was just completely... Well, sure, we live in a fallen, sinful world, okay? You're at fault for that. You're at fault for your sins. I agree. So if you don't get saved from your sins, you're going to be charged with all of it. What am I going to do? And you're going to hell. Everything you've ever done is wrong. He hasn't done. Oh, no, what, 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 what is wrong. What is wrong? God. 
Yeah, but my, if I have no, how how, is that, how do I know that God is saying what I do is real and like proper and what is not? What is not? So I went to church for a while. You know, I, I went to church for 17, 16 years, and then I kind of so I was faithful for a while. Then I had kind of like an almost like an awakening, and I realized, or this is just my thing. I just thought to myself. How do I know that any of this is real if there is no evidence? Can I get a pamphlet or I live in like I don't live in the theoretical world, I live in the real world. I live in the now. How do I know if God is real and watching over me? I just I just know he's real. How do you know that? You know he's real because he's been about like agnostic people or operations No, it's fine, it's fine. Jesus Christ, 
Do you like us up the gun? does not. Hey. You know, society or government attempts to redefine marriage. We're having a nice There is no peace day. for the wicked. Yes, there is. There is no peace for the wicked. We're having peace you here. You have no peace with God. The peace. That's the most important peace there is. Why don't you there go is. that way? No, I think I'll go this way. It's a free country. Have a nice, quiet day. It's a free country that you can walk away from. You don't want to hear this? You can walk away. Turn the damn thing down a little bit, why don't you? Walk no, away. You can walk away, sir. Walk away. I can't help it. I can't walk help away. but hear you. You walk so, away. Get the fuck out of here. We plead with you today to be reconciled to God. Lord, we you. Fuck you. So you have a problem here. today, ladies and gentlemen. You know, today, in our society, you know, people are so afraid of... You're fucking talking about sex. ...with a sinful nature. You have to be born spiritually from God in heaven by the Holy Spirit. You have to receive a new nature. A nature that loves God, that hates sin, that desires righteousness. Because with your sin nature, you will always delight and love and choose sin. And that is why the world is full of evil, full of suffering, ladies and gentlemen. Because all men follow their sinful desires, doing what is right in their own mind, living according to the lust of their flesh. And your time is running out today. Jesus said, unless you're born again, you cannot even see the kingdom of God. This is not religion. I know many people here today have religion. I was born in a religious home. I was religious my whole life until I came to faith in Christ. This is not religion because religion, all it does is change the outside. Especially here in Southern California. There are so many. This area is saturated with churches, false churches that tell you that all you have to do to be saved is repeat a prayer, ask Jesus into your heart. They tell you nothing that you have to obey God. When the Word of God says that without holiness, no one will see the Lord. They do not tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that you have to be born again of your spirit, of the Spirit of God, and turn from your evil ways. That is what repentance means. It is a turning away. But you have not been born again. That means that you are still on your way to damnation. You are no different than the atheist. You are no different than the murderer or the thief or the terrorist. You go to church every Sunday and yet you live like a devil. Like the Word of God says, they profess to know God. They say with their mouth, I know God, I know Jesus, I'm a Christian. And yet by their work, by the way that they live, they deny Him. Is that you today? Is that you today, ladies and gentlemen? Jesus warned, Matthew chapter 7, he said, Not all those that say to me, Lord, Lord, are going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those that do the will of my Father who is in heaven. If you profess to know Jesus and you do not do the will of God, you're on your way to damnation. Yes, sir? You're nothing but judgment, you're payment for your sins. Have you come to Christ? Oh, may the Lord bless you and turning you from all your iniquities. Oh, sweetie, God bless you. Thank God you. God bless you as well. Thank you, sweetheart. Oh. Out of the mouth of babes. Amen.